There we go. guys how's everybody doing today so can everybody hear me okay Making sure that this thing's working right. So, if you see the little red button up here, it means that I'm actually live and I can interact with you and answer questions that you might have in regards to this tutorial or any other tutorials that I have done. And today, here I am again. Oh my gosh, guys. I'm like so excited to be here to show you all the cool things. Today we're going to be working on the classic geode tumblers and this is by far one of the ones that I, I just love doing these. They can be so random, so completely different. Um, the hardest part is kind of coordinating the glitters that you're going to use so that you get sort of a uniform look on your tumbler. Any tumbler at all will work for this style cup. You can use the mug for them. And those look really awesome. Um, you can use the skinnies for them. This is my favorite to work on, actually, when I do these. I really love... Um, just the depth that you can get with them and you just have all the space to work with. I've done them on the, uh, the really, really big fatties. Um, and then the modern curves work out super nice too. So these are just examples, um, of what's possible. So again, you know, it's all about you being creative and you deciding what you want to do and the way that you want to do it. So, um, I'm seeing that there's a, a bunch of people watching. Uh, go ahead and comment down below just so that I know that everybody can actually hear me. Um, this guy's got to be sanded still. Oh, one of the things when you use the chunky glitter is this, uh, a lot of times it'll poke up and you end up, after you get the second layer of epoxy on here, you come back in, you give it a good sand, it's all nice and smooth, and then you put your final layer of epoxy on. Um, personally, I love them just the way they are. Uh, you can personalize them, put a name on there if you want to. Uh, usually when I make them um, up, you know, just for pre-sale. I don't bother putting names or anything else on them because I think they're kind of pretty just the way that they are. And they can be unisex, so male, female, whatever, um, you know, so they make great gifts for people too, uh, particularly rock hounds and people that really love crystals. So you can do a lot with these. <clears throat> so let's get started. All right, so a couple things that you're going to need is, first of all, you're going to need lots of glitter. So I usually pick out a whole bunch of glitter that I think I'm going to use, and then I end up paring it down to just a few. Um, but it all begins with your center part of your geode. Uh, which is always a chunky glitter. So when you're thinking about a geode and actually the way that they form in nature, 
it's always very crystallized in the center and then from there kind of gets smoothed out as it goes along so you're I, we're going to work on a skinny cup and it's just a 30 ounce skinny that i sanded and i spray painted bl matte black and now what i did just to give myself uh, some guidance which I, I really like doing it this way some people don't and they just freeform it and they come in and they just kind of slap the stuff on and it looks awesome me I like a direction uh, in which way I want to go with my cups so what I did was is I just took my sharpie and I just put myself some guidelines of how I wanted to build my geode you have to be kind of careful with these particularly when you when you're doing um, picking out your colors because you don't want your geode to end up kind of looking like lady parts, um, which is one of the biggest complaints that people seem to have. So you do want to put in some wavy lines, um, you know, just to make them look a little bit on the irregular side. So again, I hope you guys are hearing me okay. Um, I'm not seeing any comments. So somebody just say something. I know I, I tried to comment and I didn't it didn't go through. I don't know if um, if this is actually working properly or not. So somebody just say hi and um, let me know that it's that you can hear me. Okay, so anyhow, I'm going to assume that y'all can hear me. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and we're just going to go with, go for it. Okay, so aside from your sanded and prep tumbler, you're going to need your glitter and you're going to need Mod Podge. You can also use the Tacket over and over. Um, not a huge fan of that myself. I know some people really are, so whatever is your preference. However, you're not going to be able to do this with like a spray adhesive where you just spray the whole cup and you're putting stuff on it. It just really doesn't work out really well that way because you want to kind of define your lines and um, make sure that you're getting your glitter just where you want it to go. You also are going to need a whole bunch of brushes uh, depending upon how wide your lines are um, you know it, it would take you forever to fill in this part uh, with one of these so you want a wider brush um, and really that's that's it that's it's that easy um, so we start off with a lot of people use for the center part here and here they'll use what's called a um, cheat glitter which is actually a trademark name um, however we over at pink and purple monkey also have it um, just trying to find find it here and it's called hope diamond and what you can do is uh, you can use this on your cup and then you can use alcohol ink over it and it actually works out it, it will, what it will do is is it will give you the glittery look with the alcohol ink of the color of your choice so that way that you can kind of blend or get whatever effects that you want to get with it um the other company that that does it there's actually somebody that actually has what's called cheat glitter so we're just calling this hope diamond it's by pink and purple monkey uh, and this is a USA glitter, uh, very, really high quality, great stuff, great coverage, uh, all, you know, all that. There's also a fine version of it as well. And I can't remember the name of it. Uh, I don't, I don't think I have it handy on my box, but I know that there's also a fine. So can everybody, again, I'm still not seeing... I'm still not seeing any comments so I'm I'm just gonna assume that I see like 20 people watching me but I, I don't see any thank you Tammy thank you Morgan thank you Michelle oh my gosh everybody just popped up yay all right hi Barb hi Bridget 
Michelle, Morgan, Tammy. All right. Awesome. We got people. We're live. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> so um, my name's Carrie Spencer, and I'm a crafter. I've been crafting my, oh my golly, probably my whole life. Anyhow, uh, I'm also an epoxy artist, and I have been for about eight years. Uh, so I do all kinds of different things, uh, you know, in the crafting world. I, I do cups, I do molds, I do all kinds of things. So please use me. And uh, if you have questions or issues or you're trying to figure out how to do something, even if it's not tumblers, let me know. I do a lot of artwork as well. I also paint and sculpt and things like that and do dot art. So if you have questions or you want to try to figure out how to do something, uh, let me know and I'll be happy to help you out if I, uh, if I know how. The only thing I'm not good at is the cricket thing. Like, uh, forget it. It's, um, that's a whole new world to me and I have not like hardly even stepped into it yet. So for our geode, I want to kind of go with, um, where this one I did mostly in the browns. Uh, this time I actually want to go with golds and sort of a uh, what they call a sangria color, which is this gorgeous uh, kind of maroon color. I have a couple of different golds to choose from. I'm not really sure because I want to I want to see how this looks on the cup, and that's kind of the way that these things work where you're, you want to look at what you're doing and the way that you put that down. Michelle, I would love to answer that question for you. Uh, <laughs> the best epoxy for tumblers. Okay, first let me preface by saying that everyone has a choice and there are hundreds of different epoxies. In my eight years as an epoxy artist, I have used at least... 20 different brands ranging from ones I've got on Amazon, uh, other ones that I have purchased through smaller companies, and uh, they all have their ups and their downs. In August, I found uh, a company called Tumblr Poxy, and uh, I switched to Tumblr Poxy in August, and I absolutely adore it. Uh, it's a high UV repellent. Uh, it, it doesn't turn things yellow quickly. I mean, all epoxy will turn stuff yellow. So uh, you have to kind of keep in mind where you are, how, what, where it's going to be shown in your home. Uh, you know, this, how much sun it's actually going to be getting, which will turn it to yellow uh, over time anyhow. So I'm, I love tumbler epoxy though. I know some people have some problems with it. I have luckily had no problems at all with it and I am like a huge advocate for it. So that's my personal choice. I know that other people uh, who have epoxy allergies are using a, a product called um, Chrysalic and um, Bright Tone, it's also known as Bright Tone and um, Unfortunately, that's only good for tumblers. So if you ever want to branch out into doing molds and things like that, you, you're not going to be able to with that. You actually need a, a pourable uh, epoxy. So I adore tumbler epoxy. There's a group on Facebook for it. Uh, the owners are fabulous people. They're very supportive. They're very helpful. So if you have issues or concerns and things like that. So anyhow. That's just my take on it, uh, but you know whatever works for you. I've used Pro Marine, I've used um, Mass, I've used uh, oh my gosh, so many off of Amazon. But uh, the bubble issue is usually the problem, and with tumbler epoxy, I don't get that. It's designed to be low heat. You don't need to blast it with a ton of heat. Um, I find that it doesn't have a strong smell, so that's just me. So. You know, whatever works for you. And that said, and I don't get paid to say that stuff. I just really like the product. All right, so back to tumblers. All right, so what you want to do is you want to sort of map out what you want to do. And then I wanted a big empty space that I'm actually going to 
do all black in here, um, I think. And um, I might add an extra line or two, but this is sort of just a guideline for me. Yeah, we don't get a lot of the bubbles. I mean, their micro bubbles are, are always an issue for most epoxies. Um, but there's techniques that you can use with the tumbler epoxy um, that really help to reduce that problem. So again, you know, personal choice, you decide what you want and go for it. All right, so you need some Mod Podge. Now, me personally, I like to just dilute my Mod Podge ever so slightly. I, I and I'm talking about for this type of an application, what I'm going to do is, is I've got a little medicine cup. I've put, I want to say like seven and a half milliliters of tum of a uh, tum epoxy of Mod Podge in, and I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of water to it. Like honestly, it's not even like a tea, maybe half a teaspoon and I'm just going to mix it up and what it's going to do is just going to spread easier for me. Um, this process can work really quickly. You don't need, um, you know, you can move, move along. And also if you have an embossing gun, uh, that makes it go a lot faster. Generally with geodes, you kind of split your cup. So you have, a design up at the top and then on the opposite side you kind of have a design on the bottom um, there's no right or no wrong here you know you could technically carry your design on one side all the way down and not have anything on the back or maybe do it on both sides it really totally depends on what you want to do I've actually done them where I cover the entire cup and I'll do the, the whole thing and really there's no like I said no right, no wrong. So for my um, my main part, I decided that I wanted to use, I got this glitter. I'm not sure how I'm going to like it, but we're going to give it a try. Uh, usually for glitters, let's talk about glitter. So glitter, you know, there's hundreds of different little companies out there, but I'm really loving uh, pink and purple monkey glitter. I really, really like it a lot. It's most of it's USA glitter. It is, um, it's just great. It gives you really good coverage. Um, so it's a good value for your money. And there's loads of cheap glitters out there. And unfortunately, those cheap glitters, it really makes a difference. It really does. When you're doing artwork, you're doing cups. Uh, you don't want to have to keep going over and over and over and over again. You do want to make sure that you sand and prep your cup, as always. I'm not going to lecture you guys on that today because I usually end up lecturing people on making sure you sand and prep your cup. If you don't sand and prep your cup, then you're going to have problems in the long run. You may not, you may personally not experience any problems at all when you are making the cup. However, over use and time, your customer will most likely end up, particularly if they love their cup and they use it a lot, they're gonna pick up their cup and their artwork is gonna be on one hand and their stainless steel tumbler is gonna be in the other because everything's gonna let go. So that's one of the reasons that you want to sand and prep your cup because it actually adheres whatever you're doing to it to the cup. She does have a tips and trick page. She absolutely does. And I do a lot of stuff over there. I do a lot of tutorials over there. Uh, the same that I do with um, Amy's group, which is Pink and Purple Monkey. And um, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. I mean, I really, really like it. But like I said, you know what? Everybody has a choice. Everybody has a preference to what it is that they want and and that's great that's okay i mean what works for me may not work for you 
But of course, I'm going to tell you about what works for me because, hey, it works for me. And I, and I try to help people out and make life easier for them so that you don't have to, you know, go through the a lot of the struggle. I mean, like for eight, eight years, I've been working with epoxy. And I got to tell you, I've done some real bad work, honestly, real bad work. And it isn't my work. It's not me. It was the product that I was using. So when I say spend the money and get the good glitter, then, you know, it's, it's from experience. It's not like I'm trying to get you to go to somebody else's page to buy their stuff. Just make sure that you're getting a good polyester glitter. Um, and there's reasons that you want to have, like you can get glitter at like any craft shop. So what we're doing is we're just smodge podging on, um, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it at Pink and Purple Monkey. You can get it at uh, like hundreds of different places. And the reason that you kind of want to go with somebody like Pink and Purple Monkey is because you know that that is what's called polyester glitter. And the reason that you want to have a polyester glitter when you're actually working on tumblers is because inevitably you're going to have to sand that tumbler in some way some place on the tumbler there's going to be glitter sticking up or a piece of uh, you know part of your epoxy went weird and you're going to have to sand it and if you sand so and that's even with your epoxy on so you've got your epoxy on you're sanding your cup and what can happen is um Tammy, this is called Sunset. This is by uh, uh, not a pink and purple monkey. Um, it's kind of a this pink and silver and gold and black. It's gorgeous. It's I just absolutely love it. Um, I absolutely love this. This is so pretty. You could make this. I mean, honestly, you could you could make it. It's a medium, a medium gold, like a medium silver, and then it's big chunky bits of pink and black. So the, the black and the pink are like a chunky. And I want to say that the pink is more of a rose, a rosy pink. So, you know, I, I love to mix my own glitters because a lot of times I want to do something and I just don't have like the right combination. Um, so I just mix my own. I think that's cool. So, um, for you new folks, I know there's a lot of new people in this group. So tips about, uh, when you're applying your glitter to stuff, always have a piece of paper underneath of it. Um, Always, always make sure that you have a piece of paper of some kind underneath because you don't want to waste all the glitter that falls off of your cup when you're, uh, when you're applying, particularly if you're doing something on the turner and you're shaking your glitter on, you don't, and then there's epoxy dripping onto it. You don't want to, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you're salvaging all of your extra glitter because this is, this is like gold here, guys. You don't want to waste, um, your glitter. So anyhow, so the next process is, is now that I have my, my first chunky on. Now the rest of these are primarily going to be, uh, fine or medium glitters. Where did I put my glue? Oh, there it is. Um, because I, I wanted the center to really pop out and the rest of it is going to be a little, it's going to kind of blend, be a little bit more subtle. And then I'm going to actually show you how we finish one of these uh, afterwards because I, I know with the lives, it's kind of weird and it's hard to see. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm actually going to skip this next one because I want to put a lighter color in here and I'm going to actually do um, I may come up a couple and because I want to use my sangria color next and I'm just going to do the third row up now these lines uh, this isn't like a coloring book or anything like that don't be afraid to paint outside the lines get creative these lines are just a guideline 
It's just kind of a guideline for me to get an idea of where I want to go with it. If you had the opportunity, hey, how many of you guys actually watched? Um, I just threw them on with the Sharpie. Lexi, I just, that, just guidelines. I just used a Sharpie on my, uh, I, I, I actually used a silver one because I wanted to be able to see the lines because the black wouldn't show up. Um, you're not going to see them. They're just guidelines. That's, that's it. And don't get married to doing things the way that I do guys. I'm here as a guide, but I don't, I don't expect you to do it exactly my way. It's all about you finding your way. And that's one of the best things about being an artist is you do it your way. You figure out how and what works for you. Um, so then I'm just going to pop this up here. And now I'm just going to use this maroon color. I love this color. It's so pretty. Um, when you clean off your papers, so when you use your glitter and you, you clean off your paper, uh, make sure you get it clean because if you don't, what ends up happening is, is you get what I call cross contamination and then you end up needing to have like what I call the glitter dump cup because, um, your, all your stuff is blended in together. I have so many dump cups. It's a little bit scary how many dump cups I have because I've got uh, so many different projects going at one time. All right. Uh, all right. You don't have to worry about, now you can, if you choose to be very uniform and do, you know, the third, the fourth or whatever number with the same color at the, at, you know, on one side and the other, or you can switch it up. Geodes are very naturally formed. There's no rhyme or reason to them. Um, and that's the neat thing about doing these is there's, it's still going to look gorgeous no matter how you put it on. You just don't want to have uh, something that's too close in shade up against each other because you're just going to lose it. You're not, you're not going to see it. So that's the reason that we put in um, the different colors. You also want to make sure that when you're putting on your podge, your Mod Podge or devil's glue, as I call it, um, smooth it out, get it on kind of, you know, like reasonably, reasonably thick, but you don't want to have like big, huge glops. Yeah, those are amazing. I've been doing the stained glass for a while and I, cause I actually do do stained glass, but, um, I, I just love them. I just absolutely love it. I'm so glad that Joe got to do it over here because they're, they're fun. I mean, I know, you know, people say they're very tedious and whatever. Um, but for me, I just find it super relaxing. I really, you know, I'll sit down. Uh, I use my crafting as a, as a pain management tool. So, um, you know, like if I'm having, my back is really bad. So if I'm having a really bad day, I'll sit down with an art project. Hi, Jackie. Thanks for joining. Um, so anyhow, yeah, it's, there's a wealth of knowledge over in, um, the group. So we have Joe who, who's the king of stained glass. I mean, I just want to say he's the king of stained glass. We have Robin who is, uh, the queen of Micah's. Everything you want to know about Micah, this, that woman's amazing. Like she knows Micah, like. I, I don't know. She, she does a thing called Micah Mondays over there. And um, it's always using some kind of new Micah, which is, they're just so gorgeous and they're just so fun to work with. And Amy's got the most beautiful chameleon Micahs. Let me see if I have something. I do not have anything handy with the chameleon. Um, oh my golly, it's amazing stuff. Oh, 
Well, this is my third live Rhonda here in this group, but I've done a, a, a whole bunch uh, in the in Amy's group and. I did, um, I also do lives on the Tumblr, um, sorry, crafting lives on the Tumblr Poxy page, and then I also have my own channel where I, um, I post all my lives. So again, you know, like I said, guys, we're just using the lines as just a guideline. You're not going to see any of that. It's just so that I kind of stay on track and I don't have something that's like too huge and, and weird going on. Yes, I did draw my lines on. Okay, so now that we have these two on here, uh, what I want to do is, is I'm going to come in and I'm going to decide. Like I said, I like to grab... A whole bunch. It's it's drawn on, Rhonda. Um, just drawn on. It's just a guideline. That's it. It just gives me an idea. You don't, like I said, guys, don't get married to the way that things get done. When you when you're doing art, when you're this is art. Go with the flow of it. If you need a guideline to do it, and give yourself a, a actually sometimes I'll just take a piece of paper. And I will just sort of kind of map out the way that I want it to be. And I'll say, oh, okay, well, I want a big centerpiece. I want to, I want to, when I'm doing a geode, I want a, a, a pretty big one here. And then I want a couple of big lines and then I want some skinny lines. And I'll actually just take a piece of paper and kind of draw wavy lines just to sort of get a feel for the way that I want the, the lines to actually flow on the cup, uh, where if you're doing it directly onto the cup, then, it, you know, you don't want to have a whole bunch of lines on there because then you'll actually get confused. Um, so I, then I'll copy over and say, okay, this is the way that I want my lines to be, uh, or generally, like I said, now I've actually had people in the in the past where they'll say I need six uh, or five or or three exactly the same. Doing one of these exactly the same is going to be really really hard unless you make a template. So that's would be you'd actually make template pieces of this this geode shape and then the lines and actually have to kind of layer them in and then you know draw them onto your cup when you're working with chunky a little tip and see how see how like pushy outy this stuff it pushy outy that's that's a new word uh they're really sticking out you want to come in once this glue starts to dry and you really want to press it down like really press it down hard um, cause you want this to be flat and the extra pieces will come off. I've gotten close. I've gotten really, really close, but they're not, there's no way, there's no way they're going to be identical. And I have to tell people that particularly with the geodes, it's different with other style cups. But with the geodes, I, I tell them all the time, it's like, you know, it's like nature. I am. I prefer a Mod Podge personally. There are other people who like tack it over and over. I like my Mod Podge. Um, it hasn't failed me yet. And I, I just really like it a lot. All right. So the next one is, is I have gold. I have uh, two different golds, and I have a like a, a champagne color gold. Actually, I have three golds. Um, I have a bright gold, and then I have a chunky gold. So I'm going to kind of play with those um, and see. I think in this big area here, I think I might do... Um, I think I'm going to do this champagne 
in here. Because I think that will contrast really well up against the burgundy. And remember, the lines are there just as a guideline. I'm pro and I'm not really sticking to them exactly. And that's okay. You can make your lines thick. You can make them thin. I mean, honestly, there's no right and no wrong in this. The biggest thing is, is the shape. So when you're doing it, you know, again, if you have any knowledge about geodes, and actually before I started doing geode tumblers, I was, I love rocks and crystals and um, I was familiar with how they formed, but I actually went on Google and I looked at different geodes and I, I sort of saw the way that they were um, you know, constructed. So it gave me some uh, different ideas on how to make my cups. Again, you want this on oh, pretty good, you know, I really don't want to have to keep coming in and filling in again. And this is one of the reasons that I like the fine glitters, um, for the majority of the work because then you don't actually have to come back in a million times. Oh, I hate it when that happens. I do that all the time though. It's like you have to resist touching it. You re <laughs> I almost want to put like a big sign up when I'm working on stuff. Don't touch it. Just don't touch it. Because that's the natural thing. It's it's like the kid, you know, you tell them don't touch the hot stove and they got to touch the hot stove. It's the same with resin and stuff like that. It's like, oh, is it dry yet? Can I take it out of the mold? And it looks dry and you think it's dry and you think that it's been there long enough. And then it's like, oh man, no, that wasn't dry. I just like stuck my finger in my mold and it looks awful. <laughs> so hopefully it didn't ruin it which I've done. I have ruined some. All right. You notice too, as I'm talking and I'm putting on my different layers of glitter, I'm kind of waiting a minute or two in between my colors because I really want to make sure that those are uh, dry or are close to dry. Like it, it's the same thing. Like, uh, when Joe was showing you the stained glass tutorial, um, you know, you do want to kind of let them dry a little bit in between layers just so you don't get a whole lot of cross-contamination and, like, the gold is sticking to the the mauve color, um, which would be a real shame. All right. I, yeah, that was, that's a pain in the neck, too, when that happens, for sure. That is absolutely... All right. Uh, I think I'm going to do the gold on the outside. So give these you guys should definitely give one of these a try. They're a lot of fun. Um, they really are a lot of fun. Because if they weren't, I wouldn't do them. I hope you all got to watch the gnome tumbler um, tutorial that I did and the the Nutcracker. Those are those are loads of fun with playing with the clay. And I'll be bringing you a couple more tutorials this week. Um, all right. So again, you see, I'm, I'm really covering up those lines. So the lines really, they don't show. You're not going to see them. Um, ooh, you're, you're not going to see them at all. 
I'm flicking off big pieces because I pushed that down and some of that black, uh, big pieces of black came off. So I'm pushing that out of the way. All right. I think this is definitely one of my favorite cups to do, one of the cup styles to do. Really love them. Oh, all right. So now I'm just taking my brush and I'm sort of pushing off um, the extra big pieces that fell into my gold because I want to put this back into my container. And it's that easy, my friends. That easy. It's not hard to do. That's the whole thing. Is people get so intimidated and are afraid to try new stuff because they think it's going to be, oops, too hard. And, and if it doesn't come out right the first time, well, you know what? Strip it. It's easy. Strip the cup. Start over. I actually don't believe in stripping cups unless it's an epoxy era. Um, I always figure that there's something that I can do with that cup at some point. And um, I have never had a strip a cup. Actually, there that's I have one. One that I'm going to have to strip. But that was an epoxy era. Um, when I put it on, I, I wasn't paying close enough attention and it just kind of fish-eyed on me, which isn't normal. Um, but it's, it's to the point, it's so bad that it's just not even worth trying to fix it. A clean, dry brush. I used a silver Sharpie just because it's black. You could use a white one if you want to. Technically, you could use a black one if you really if you don't want to see the lines, but you're not going to see the lines if you can't see my lines that I've I've gone over. Um, let's see. Okay, so the next color is. Um, so soft dry brush, like a soft, soft brush, uh, you want to use that after those sort of set. I'm going to let this set for just a second, um, and then I'm going to brush off my glitter, extra glitter, you know, just to make sure that I have good coverage on there, and then I'll go on to move on to my next color. Tumblr Poxy is like on sale and they do free shipping. So they don't give a technical discount, but it's marked down on the website and there's also free shipping. So that's a huge discount because the shipping alone would be something like $25 or $22, um, you know, on the bigger kits. So they have quarts, gallons, and then a two gallon um, thing. The quarts go really quickly. So if you do a lot with your epoxy, um, you're not going to want a quart. You're going to want a bigger one. Definitely. I'm just looking for another glitter, guys. Give me one second. I want to I want to find one more one more to go in there cuz I think it needs a little pop. A little more pop. And I was staying away from doing silver. I had wanted to put a silver in there, but I think that silver is going to be too much of a contrast on it. And I really didn't want to do... I didn't want to do a chunky... Um, in there. I have so much glitter. It's frightening. Like, truly, truly frightening. 
how much glitter I have. And I've got glitter from lots of different places. And honestly, I really like the pink and purple monkey glitter. All right, so I think I want to do like a coppery, kind of like a coppery color. We'll try that and see. There is going to be some black in this as well, but I always do, um, usually I'll do like my light colors last and I'll do my darker colors first just so they don't kind of bleed into each other, which always ends up happening. It's like, oh my gosh, I hate that. I actually had that happen to me on a, um, a gnome cup and it just, my dark color went all into my light color and now I have to kind of come back in and fix that guy so uh, I'm staying away from pink usually I ends up defaulting to pink and I really don't want to default to pink But that sure is pretty. All right. We're not going to put, put the pink down. See, this is my pink cup. It came out really pretty. So, these are a blast. Is anybody working along? Um, one of the things I love is, is, you know, when I'm doing a tutorial, I love it if you work along with me. Uh, and then I can answer the questions that you have as you go. But if uh, if you're not, that's okay too. If you have a problem or you're you're you know having an issue with the thing that you're doing, uh, you know my mailbox is open to anybody, so you can send me a message, and I will happily just tell me what group you're from, and I will respond to it um, just to make sure that you're taken care of. All right. Now, Pink and Purple Monkey is giving a discount uh, for first-time purchases. Um, and it's a 15% off. Um, and I will post. I don't think Dane is here today. So I will post uh, the information. It should be on the original post that I made. But I will. It's, uh, I believe, Tudor 15. Um it's at www.pinkandpurplemonkey.com, and that's on everything, I believe. So you get your glitter molds. She's got some great molds, guys. If you're looking for molds, um, there's some beautiful molds over there. All right. Let's see. I don't know. I'm torn between these two. I got, I got like this kind of medium, and then I have a, a kind of a orangey. I think that's too dark. I think I'm going to go with this other copper color. I really like that. It's all process, and that's the nice thing about it. Tip about Mod Podge is I keep a, a little uh, cup, old cup, um, with water in it, and I just drop my brush into it, and then I'll, I'll wipe off my brush. It keeps the bristles from, you know, hardening up on you in between. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The medium copper is really, like, really pretty. And um, I, I'm liking that. Eh. Again, lines. Lines are just guidelines. Little tip I find helps me when I'm doing it is if you take your brush and you kind of come up against your previous layer that's down 
and you just kind of give it a little tap. Uh, you're not going over the top. You're just tapping it into uh, that glitter. What it does, because I've added just a tiniest amount of water to it, it's going to kind of flow down in there. So I'm going to get a better adhesion with my glitter um, so that I'm not going to have like a weird gap in between. So we're going to give this a try and see how this looks. It's not coming out. Now we get to make a real mess because we took the lid off. I like the mediums, but again, it just like the chunky, you got to push them down. If you don't push them down, then you're going to end up with trouble um, because they're, they're going to be poked up when you put your epoxy on and then you're going to end up having to come back in and do like either lots of layers to make it go flat or, oh, I like that. Um, I really like the way that looks. That light's got bright. Let me, let me shift up. There. Um, and then just check them over and make sure you got all your spots. Looks good. Um, and then go to your other end and do your other end. I'm just going to put a really fine line of it on part of this. And there's nothing that says that this color has to go all the way around your design either. Like it doesn't. It goes wherever you want it to go. You want it just on one part? Well, then just put it on the one part. That's okay. It, it's your design. You decide. Then you just tap it down, tap it down, tap it down. I have some fun, other fun ones coming up. Um, I'm going to do here for you guys. I'm going to do a plaid, but it's not going to be done with sticky tape because I, I don't like sticky tape myself. I know um, a lot of people are huge fans of sticky tape, the double-sided sticky tape. I, I, I don't know. I mess it up every time I do it. I tried to do like a serap cup where you take the, the sticky tape and you put it around and then you pull it off a piece at a time and do different colors and looks like a three-year-old did it. Um, so, not... <laughs> I will avoid the double-sided sticky tape except for on the plaid tumbler, uh, tumbler I do use it to do uh, some of the line work, the finishing line work. All right. Okay, so there is our deep copper color. I think that looks really, really good. And that goes into the mix. So I'm not going to end up using this heavy duty gold because I think that's just going to be way too bright. And I don't think I'm going to need this other super shiny gold, but we'll see. Actually, you know what? I think I am going to use that. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I have a tendency to use the same brush a lot over and over again. Some people I know like to um, switch off their brushes. If they're having like a smaller area that they're doing, they get a smaller brush. Uh, I don't really, I don't really do that, but whatever works for you, you know, and Mod Podge is like, I don't know. I think it's horrible to clean out of brushes. So I always keep, I have a set of Mod Podge brushes that I keep, which I got these on Amazon and they were like mega cheap. And there was like a pack of, I don't know, 20 or 30 of them. 
so I'll use them until they're they just aren't any good this uh, wooden part tends to break off over time so I will just use them until they fall apart and now when they fall apart I will just replace it all right let's try this other gold and see how this looks so a little trick that I found is, is if you just put it on one end just to kind of get it a view and an idea of how that's going to look. And I think that's like way too yellow. So that's just why I always like to have a bunch of different um, glitters handy to go. And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to brush it off with a little water. You see, I just brushed it and took it right off. To remember to clean off your brush so you don't have that gold in your brush or the, the color that you didn't like stuck in your brush and then clean off your the paper. I like to use um, parchment paper when I do it. I find that it doesn't stick where like regular uh, regular paper has a tendency to stick. I, I don't like it kind of bothers me. I'm going to try some white instead. I'm going to see how that looks. This is um, Single Pearl by Pink and Purple Monkey. It's really pretty. It's kind of got an opalescent. Ooh, I kind of like that. It's sort of, it's very different. All right, so we're gonna put that on. Single Pearl's really pretty. It's, um, it's very opalescent. It is a little, um, a little sheer. So sometimes you have to come back in and do a second coat of it. But I, I do like the way that it looks on here. It really makes these two areas stand out from one another. Now, usually when I end up doing white, I end up having to put whatever I'm working, uh, you know, whatever white has fallen onto the paper goes into another little cup that I'll continue to use on this cup because um, uh, what happens is, is the other stuff sort of falls off of your cup. You know, you get a little bit of silver, a little bit of gold in there, and it, it sort of blends um, all right. I hope that makes sense. But it, feel free to ask questions if you have any. Um, if there's a particular type of tumbler that you're interested in learning about, um, you can let me know. Um, I do a lot of different styles. And like I said, I have a whole bunch that I want to want to show you guys. I think that that'll be fun. All right. I like these little shakers. Kind of let you control what you want. It makes this pop out really nice too, just to have that little, little tiny bit of white. So I'm not going to put this back into my cup. I'm going to actually take and put this into another little side cup and I'll use that, uh, some of that on the bottom. 
but the single pearl is beautiful. It's really, it's very iridescent. It's got this, this beautiful opal. It's iridescent. It's opalesque. It's it's just so pretty. Um, so it's a it's a great color, and it goes on everything. Like you could use it on anything. Now that's going to need a second coat because that is it is light. Um, and then we'll just keep filling in and that's all. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do a little bit of black in here and in between. Um, I love doing the gnome tumbler. We all had such a fun time yesterday. So if you haven't had a chance to check out that live, please do. And um, there's a lot of people from the um, from Amy's group that have been coming over to do tutorials here. And we have so many great, talented people. Um, and we've invited all of you to come and join us. It's zero drama. It's it's just it's a great learning group. People are fantastic. They're incredibly kind. All right. This might be too soon. Like I said, don't rush your colors. When you're coming in close to another color that you had just put, um, put your stuff on and put your glitter onto, you do want to be careful because um, if that previous color isn't set, it hasn't had a chance to dry, then it can sort of blend in, in and end up merging, which isn't always a desirable look. I'm not going to say that it's it's a bad thing all the time, but sometimes you really just don't want to have other colors mixed in. So you do want to be careful. And I think I'm just going to add a little bit A nice thing about doing this style too is, is you can kind of say like you've got an area that's really wide um, and then you decide after you've glittered it, oh my gosh, that's really wide. I want to do something that's a little more subtle. You can, you can just come in and put a little bit of Mod Podge over it and um, you can just sprinkle another glitter on. You don't want to get it too thick, but you can do that, now, which is exactly what I'm doing right now, because I thought that that area was just a little bit too, a little bit too much. All right. Cool beans. All right. And there, see, that's all there is to it, guys. Isn't it pretty? I'm liking it. Oh, can you see the other side? There. Other side. Now, with the bottom, you could do the whole thing one color, or you can actually take this geode part here and carry it down into the bottom. Um, totally personal choice there's no again with this cup because they're naturally irregular there really is no right and no wrong with it so it's i think this is like the per one of the most perfect beginner cups I always put my lids on my glitter because I am, I, I, I tend to knock things over. Oh, 
one little spot that, that kind of came in where I didn't want it. There we go. All right. Remember to bang your cup and get your excess off. And now once you know that your stuff is dry, whatever you've done, and usually I, I want to say like every third color. So by the time you get to the third color, your first one has set enough where you can actually come in and dry brush it. Do that frequently because what it also does is it keeps all the extra stuff off of your, your um, paper so you're not going to end up with a lot of cross-contamination between your colors. If you're very frugal with your glitter, you can always have what they call the, the dump cup. And just have a little cup on the side where you're just dumping all this extra, extra, you know, like these little tiny bits that are there. And I have done that. And I end up with quite a substantial amount of glitter by the time I get done with a bunch of projects. So, again, any questions, feel free. Now, on my white, I'm noticing as it's drying that it is actually, um, it, it, the black is coming through. So I'm going to come back in after this sets up just for us. So all that I'll do is I'll probably do another couple of lines and then I'll come back in and I'll just re-hit that white. Again, I can't emphasize enough the importance of taking your chunky glitter, which is that area that we did first, and press it down really, really hard. And I'm pushing, like really squishing it to get it to go flat. If by the time we're done painting all of this and it has set before I seal this, and you will need to seal these because if not, when you put this on the turner and you put your epoxy on and you have it turning in your beautiful cup, all your stuff is just going to kind of go together, um, which is really sad when that happens. And, and I've done that too. Um, you want to really kind of make sure you seal it. You can seal with um, two time, Rust-Oleum two times clear. You can seal with uh, spray, uh, like a spray adhesive um somebody said e6000 is really good i don't know about that i haven't actually used it personally i like this to seal my cups or i use mod podge and what i will do is this i will water my mod podge down so that it's a 50 50 and then i will just paint it onto my cup and i start at the top and I'll just keep coming down. And it, it's funny because, you know, you put it on there and it's like it turns your cup kind of white. And you're like, oh, my God, I just ruined my stuff. But it dries clear. So don't worry about that when you see it. Uh, just make sure that the Mod Podge that you're using is a clear dry because there's several different types of Mod Podge out there. I use the um, the classic, the Gloss Luster. Really like this one. Uh, you can get it in this size, or you can get it in the ginormous size, uh, depending upon how much you use it. It does tend to go weird and dry out, um, even with the lid on it. So I'm going to say, like, if it's not a product that you use a whole lot, go ahead and just get the small one. But the big one is very economical. It's a um, really good price. All right, so the next one. So we always kind of like looking at it going, all right, what color am I doing next? What color am I doing next? I don't want to use black. 
because my background here is is going to it's going to be glitter but it will be black so um i want to make sure that i'm i'm constantly contrasting and going back and forth maybe i'll use that chunky this um again although you just see if i have one that's a little bit a little bit um finer because when you start putting a lot of mediums and a lot of chunkies on um it, it just doesn't look right because again you're doing a geode and geodes are naturally formed um so if you're familiar with them like i said you know they're going to be I guess I don't. Um, there, you just don't want to have too many chunkies on there. All right. I like this copper. This is cool. It's a medium. Like a medium. Oh, wow. It came out really quick. It's almost like when when you're using the glitters too and you get used to them you, you can tell by the sound oh that's a medium that's a that's a chunky glitter that's a fine glitter they all have a different sound to them just gonna touch And tap it down. Hope you all are enjoying the videos and the, and the tutorials that everybody's been doing. I think it's really awesome that um, we're getting to come and help you all out and teach you some new stuff. And yeah, there's tons of stuff on YouTube, but there's not, you know, it's really hard to ask questions if you have them. So it's nice to have the live tutorials for people to learn. All right. Now, if you're finding that your seams aren't matching and I call the seam like that area right between the two colors, you know, you just kind of come back in and just put a little more Mod Podge in there. Um, but if you're finding there's a huge space, like, uh, you know, and it, you didn't get good coverage, then you want to wait till it dries. And then you want to come back in. But this just cleans up super easy the parchment and put it right back into your container so I think I'll do the plaid cup next for you guys because um, those are fun those are a lot of fun Now, that one thing, too, is, is that as you do your design on both sides, so you're doing alternating designs, you, you, you have uh, your upper design here and your lower design here. The further down and up that you take these, the more risk that you run, like when you're grabbing a hold of this to turn. So you might find that with the design that comes up higher and, and down lower on the opposite side, you may have to let it really dry well before you can come back in and, and do more on your cup. So don't rush your process because you don't want to have to 
um, you know, redo the whole thing because you grabbed, you grabbed a hold of it and you didn't mean to. And I, I know, see, I know these things because I've done it. I've done it so many times where it's like, I'll be just sort of like trying to get my work done. And it's up. Oh, okay. And I grab a hold of it and then I got my hand in it and I just sort of ruined my whole design. And this is still pretty fragile. So you could technically just swipe it off. I hope that makes sense. So, if anybody has any questions, please ask. You know, we're happy to answer any questions that you have. And the tutorial will be available. So, if, um, if you didn't get to see it, the whole thing or you're tuning in late, the, the video will be here. I'll also have it on my YouTube channel. So it, it will also be available there. Um, and I will post a link for that as well. I will be posting a link for Pink and Purple Monkey. I do get a 15% discount for your purchases. Um, she's got beautiful, beautiful stuff. So, and rhinestones too. If you're looking for great rhinestones, um, Amy's got some beautiful rhinestones over there. I think there's six different colors and there's a whole bunch of different sizes. So you'll find that as you work, you, like this chunky glitter, every once in a while you get like this big piece that just sort of lets go. Just take it off um, and get rid of it because you don't want to have those falling into your, um, your other colors. And you don't want to try and tap it back down if it's already come off. But I'm getting really good coverage today. Uh, I'm not finding that I'm needing to really come back in other than the white area. Uh, that's the only area that really needs to be gone over a second time. And that's the nature of white. I think whites, um, you're always going to need a second coat of white. Particularly on a dark base. You know, you've got, I've got a black base here. And, um... I did find that when you're putting on your white, if you put your glue on just a little tiny bit thicker than normal, that can help a little bit. But there's a fine line in that too because you don't want to have your glue so thick that it ends up balling up or doing weird stuff on you. And it does the same thing to the other side. So. But for you new folks that are just tuning in, um, this is a great cup for new folks that are that haven't really had a, the opportunity to do like a whole bunch of different tumblers and you want something different. Uh, they're really a lot of fun. And like I said, the hardest part is picking out the glitters that you want to use. Uh, you do not want to have like a, a bunch of chunky on there. You do want one or two, but you don't want a lot. And you also want to make sure that you don't have two shades that are super, super close together because you, you won't see them. Um, 
you'll end up losing the design that you're planning ahead. Now, why well, this, this white's really getting getting lots of colors in it now. But that's okay. Almost time for a new piece of parchment. Okay, so now we have the final line on here. And, um, you know, usually that's, uh, it's a personal choice. You know, like whatever, you want to go light, you want to go dark. I'm going to go light because I'm going to be having my background here is all going to be black. So I want to make sure that I have um, a nice contrast between the two. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put this in. I'm going to use that really beautiful champagne color. I think I'm going to take that off a little sideways. Again, remember, your lines are just guidelines. You don't have to stay inside the lines at all. You can think outside the box, as they say. And do them bigger or smaller, because, again, the whole thing's just going to be covered. Well, hi, everybody who's just tuning in. I hope you all got all your holiday stuff taken care of. All right. So here we go. And I think we're going to do... This we got a bunch of snow yesterday here. I, we weren't. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't think we would actually get so much. Um, we usually get a little snow for Christmas, but it isn't too much. But we've got quite a bit down. And I'm in Massachusetts, so. Double check. Make sure you got all your seams. Your seams are the parts in between the colors. So make sure you get in there real good and that you're not having any blank spots. Um... That looks pretty good. Ta-da! Isn't it pretty? It's pretty! Now this one... I'm going to clean this up before I... Uh, see, I just knocked it. When, um... When you're doing, when you're going down further, you want to be like kind of careful that you don't knock it. Because when you do, you end up having to come back in and fixing the boo boos. Alright. So, there so y'all can see. Oh, we do. So I think y'all get kind of get the idea of how to do this. And I, I hope that you make one and you post them so that I can see them. So once you get this all done and you have all the all your design on exactly the way that you want it to be, um, then what you're going to do is you're going to seal your cup. The sealing process is completely necessary. You cannot skip it. And the reason is because if you skip it, 
then you are going to end up with nothing but a whole big mishmash of colors all over your cup and you'll probably cry. I've done it. I have done it so many times where it's like I thought I sealed it. Um, and, and then I come, come in and I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to get it on the turner. I'm super excited. And I put it on the turner and all of a sudden it's like, oh geez, um, epoxy is running all over the place. The glitter is moving all over the place and, and it's just bad bubbles all the way around. So make sure you seal your cup at least three times if you're doing a spray. Uh, the Mod Podge, I find I can usually do one to two uh, times. I can do it once or twice, and it's it's good. It's really good. I missed a spot. I'm liking it. I like it. All right. So for everybody who's new, just tuning in, um, my name is Carrie Spencer, and um, I am here to teach you all how to do cool stuff. Um, Amy from Pink and Purple Monkey Company has uh, given a, a discount code for everybody who wants to come on over and check out the beautiful glitters and molds and micas and things like that that she has over um at Pink and Purple Monkey, and it's 15% um, off, and I will post the link. Okay, I like it, I think. I think, I think, I think. We are done with that. Okay, so what I will do is, is I will leave this to dry really, really well. And then once it's dry, I will seal the, these two parts. And then I'll come back in and I'll do my finishing where I will... Um, I really like this matte look, but I don't know... I think I'm going to, I'm going to put the glitter on it anyhow. Um, cause I just think that that's going to look really, really cool. Okay. So once you seal the entire, you have all your glitter on and you completely seal everything and you seal it really, please, please, please seal it really well. And I know I've said it a bunch of times and you're all like, what is she an idiot? She said it like five times. It's like, no, really, I don't want to see you do mistakes like I've made where I've not sealed and I thought, oh, well, it's just a tiny spot. It'll be okay. Uh, and it, what it ends up doing is, is it just merges all over the place. And it's such a disaster. Um, so make sure you seal your cup. You're going to lay down uh, and making sure that all of your chunky glitter, see like this for some reason, they just keep popping up and you just want to keep poking them down. If they don't poke down and your stuff is dry, then you really want to come in and you want to brush it off. And if they're sticking out um, and, and this is all dry here, um, and you push it down, what happens is, is when you come back in with your sealer, if you use the Mod Podge like I do, it works really good. Because what I can do is, is I'll, I'll show you, I can actually come in and paint right over all my glitter here. 
and just paint on. And after about five minutes, when it starts to get kind of tacky, I can come in with a, like the end of a paintbrush. I mean, you could use your finger if you wanted to, but I just come in with the paintbrush and I will push down all those pieces that are not sticking. And then they're all nice and flat. So I don't have to worry about it. And again, you know, you're just going to cover your whole thing. You're going to do two layers of epoxy. Make it nice and smooth. Sand it down if necessary. And then you're going to come in. Now, if, it, if it's perfectly smooth, and I do mean perfectly smooth, and you're really happy with it, you're not still not done. Because what you're going to do is then you're going to finish your cup. So you're moving into, let's say, a finished cup. Now this is, this cup is done. It's sanded, it, it's, um, it's sanded, but it needs a little more sanding. But I can show you. Let me see this one. It might be better. Yeah, this one's better. We'll do it on this one then, because this one needs a lot more sanding. And you'll find some of them need way more sanding than others for some reason. And there's no rhyme or no reason to it. It's like, oh my gosh, why I've sanded that cup like so many times and it's still not right. All right, let me clean this up here and then I will show you how to finish off your cup after you get your boxy on. All right. So in order to finish these, you can do you can do it a couple of different ways. You can use um, paint pens which are great. So uh, you can use regular paint pens. These are, uh, generally people do them with silver, gold, black, or white, but you can use whatever makes you happy. Um, these are Posca. This is a uh, metallic silver and a metallic gold. Uh, these are manipulate. They're really like easy to work with super super easy to work with um then you could use wrong color wrong color this is my favorite which is the krylon and these come in silver gold or copper um they're kind of pricey you can find this is a 18 karat gold leaf pen um, the silver is, really pretty too. Rust-Oleum makes them as well. So, um, these two are, are fantastic, but it's going to give you like a wide line where Posca's give you a really fine line. So there's a difference. Um, and these do have like a really nice fine line to them. Uh, the way that you use these is, is you shake them up really good and then you take a piece of paper or something like that and you depress the end. And the paint will flow out. Now, the problem is, is that if you're not careful and I always suggest when you're doing this, you do it on a paper, not directly on your cup. Because sometimes as you push this down, the paint will goosh out and then you, your, your cup is like a mess. So, and it, this, these are hard to get off, even with like alcohol or acetone or anything like that. The third choice that you have is, is you can use alcohol ink and paint it on. Um, Pinata makes a, a gold and a silver. If you're familiar with alcohol inks, these are, are wonderful to work with. Um, it's just they're a little, I think they're a little trickier to use because they are alcohol. Um, they'll dry out really, they dry out pretty quickly um, and they also are really, really runny. 
So you could use a fine brush in order to do your line work if you wanted to. Um, and again, like I said, you know, you use whatever colors. Most people work with black, silver. Some people use Sharpies on their, their cups. I had a silver one here. I don't know where it went. Um, but you could use a, a, you know, you could use a Sharpie if you really wanted to. And I know that the Sharpies come in a whole lot of different colors and things like that and width and thicknesses. So the way that you would decide what you're going to do, or, and again, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this step. As a matter of fact, honestly, I don't. I, I really don't do it because I don't like how it looks. But I will show you because the Poscas actually come off easier than the rest of them. All right, so what you're going to do is, is what you would do is, is you would come in and define the line in between. You don't have to do it on every single one. So normally you would do like um, like a little line work. Let me get this guy going. Uh-oh. Of course. All right. Well, the gold one dried out. However, I have a use for these. So what I do is that I will take them and I will um, actually use the dried out ones or the ones that ran out of ink. And I will use it to dip my alcohol inks in, which I really, really like. Uh, this is another choice that you can do line work with which I, I love these. These are one of my favorites. But again, you have to brush them on. So you do need a kind of a steady hand in order to be able to do it. All right. Get this going. I don't know what's up today. All my stuff is drying out. I've been getting a lot of things done. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're just going to decide, hey, I want to make my line... And I'm going to do it in silver so that you're going to be able to see. And what you do is, is you just kind of come along your line. And it defines the line. I can't talk and do this at the same time, evidently. I do like these little pens, um, paint pens, because you do have a lot of control with the thickness. Of what it is that you're doing. So you would usually alternate between a couple different colors and do like silver and maybe, um, you know, silver and maybe black or white whatever you wanted to. Um, I'll do one more line for you so you can see. You don't want to touch it because it will smudge. So again, patience when you're doing it. And that's all you do. You don't have to do every one. It's really more just to like bring out some of the lines in the geode that kind of get buried. And then once you put that on, 
what you would do is, is you would actually re-epoxy one last time over the whole thing. And if you if you want to put vinyl on at this point, you, you would put the vinyl on and then do your final layer of epoxy just the same way that you would with a regular tumbler. And you would do your bottom. Now, in my bottom, I actually only um, had like a couple of little spots there. So, there's my bottom. And that's it. That's how it works. Once you get your second layer on and your, uh, I'm sorry, your third layer on and your, you know, and your vinyl is all done and then you pack it up and you ship it off to your customer and they pay you or they pay you before and everybody's happy. So I hope that you all enjoyed this, that you got a lot out of it and that you're looking forward to more. Because I am here to drive you all crazy with lots and lots and lots of tutorials. And um, I will have uh, some more cool stuff coming up. I'm going to do a traditional plaid cup for you all. Which is not done with double-sided sticky tape. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I don't have it handy. But I will uh, take a picture of it. I will post it up for you so that you all can see it. And then I'm actually going to be doing a dragon scale. So I'm going to teach you all how to do dragon scale cup. And um, in order to do the dragon scale, you will need to have either a uh, cutting machine, a Cricut silhouette, or you need to be really, really patient because you're going to be cutting out your dragon scales. So again, my name is Carrie Spencer. My mailbox is opened to all of you. Uh, if you have any questions, if there's something that you want to know about, if there's any kind of tutorials that you're interested in, um, please message me. Let me know. More than happy to help you out with any type of arts and crafts projects because I do a whole lot of different things besides resin. So, thank you all so much. Hey, Sherry, I didn't even see you there. Hi, how are you? Um, and thanks, Barb, for hanging in through the whole thing, and Melissa, too. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. And all the rest of you that hung out and uh, spent time with me. And for those of you who uh, don't get to see any more of my lives before the holidays, I wish you all a very happy holiday. Today is uh, Yule, and it is the winter solstice. It is the longest day of the year. And uh, a time to bring light back into your life and hope and joy. So I hope that you all have a very, very joyful holiday if I don't get to see you. Bye-bye now.